Hey guys, it's Sal from House of Guy Python. So in this week's video, we're gonna go over my top five uh, favorite things about breeding ball pythons. Um, so I'm just gonna go step by step. Um, I will probably be showing off, I'll try to show off some ball pythons as I'm talking. Uh, so hopefully you can enjoy that. And um, yeah, let's just break it down and get into this week's video. All right guys, so the first thing on the list I'm gonna talk about is patience. Uh, so definitely one thing you need in terms of breeding ball pythons, uh, you wanna start off with some patience for sure, um, just because pretty much every aspect along the year, you're, you are waiting for something else. Um, and even just speaking in terms of adult ball pythons, if you started off with adults, uh, you're still, you still need patience in order to, um, you know, let those females build, uh, waiting for, um, you know, prelay shed, um, ovulations, uh, them laying the eggs, then finding out what's in the egg, which genetics, and then finding out, um, you know, what that snake is, whether it's a male or female. Um, then you're waiting for it to take its first meal. There's just so much waiting involved that you definitely have to be a patient person. Um, and you know, that's that's best case scenario. Sometimes, um, you know, you'll, you'll get slugs. Uh, a female will slug out for you, so you have to wait until the next year just for a chance. Um, so there, there's so much to it. I just wanted to point out that it definitely takes a lot of patience breeding ball pythons, um, but it is 100% worth it. And I feel like if you can be patient with ball pythons, you can use that in other aspects of life as well, uh, which is, I, I feel like I've gained more patience because of this. Um, so I had to put that at number one. So just have some patience, uh, stay positive and focused, and um, you know, you'll reach, you'll reach your goals. All right guys, so number two, I'm gonna go with, it's an art form. Um, so in a way, we're all, any, any ball python breeder, um, when you start working with different genetics, you somewhat kind of feel like an artist. Um, you know, because what we're doing basically is we are taking, um, you know, a color palette from one snake and maybe we're mixing with a different color palette from another um, to try and see if we can make a, a snake that has higher contrast, um, higher warmth or lighting. Um, through these different genetics and the other side of it is going to be uh, pattern mutations which we are kind of in our head imagining how this pattern is going to work react with this pattern um, and it's just it's so much fun doing that it's one of the things I was definitely most intrigued about um, I come from a pretty artistic family um, but I'm not very I'm not super super good at drawing but this was something that I really enjoy and um, you know something that just got me so excited into ball pythons. I just found it so cool that you could mix, you know, this really yellow snake with this really orange snake, and then you're getting kind of, you can see both of those things kind of clashing. Um, sometimes one will come in stronger than the other, or there'll be a perfect mix. Um, and same with um, pattern mutations. You know, you can get something that reduces pattern really drastically and then one that makes it super crazy. And again, they clash or they'll mix really nicely. So it's just something that, I'm sure a lot of people thought think of, but it's definitely something that will open up to more um, of an artistic way of looking at breeding ball pythons. So I definitely wanted to bring that up as our uh, our number two. Okay, so number three, we're gonna put up learning genetics. So one of the best things I found with ball pythons uh, that really intrigued me, especially when I first started looking into it, uh, were genetics and how how these genetics play a part within these animals. Um, learning about incomplete dominant, dominant, and recessive genes. Um, if you're if you're not familiar with those, definitely go look it up. It's super interesting. Uh, it doesn't just work with ball pythons. It works with pretty much every animal, including humans. We can essentially almost predict somewhat what clutches are going to turn out like um, based on these these genetics, um, and especially recessive genetics. They are super super interesting. Um, but it, it, it's very scientific. It's very cool to look into. Um, I'm not going to explain genetics because that takes way too long and I'm trying to make this video not so long, but there are tons of videos explaining genetics. Um, tons of breeders who've been in it much longer than me who can definitely explain it better than I can, but it's still something that's super interesting. Um, I definitely suggest if you're new into ball pythons to go and check out any sort of morph calculator. Um, I usually use Morph Market's uh, morph, uh, genetic calculator, and you can put in different ball pythons genetics and they'll show you exactly what the babies, uh, what your chances are uh, of hitting each snake in each clutch uh, by percentages, uh, which is really cool. So definitely check that out. But again, um, definitely something that uh, brought me into the hobby and that got me more interested into genetics 
uh, was breeding ball pythons. Wearing a toucan here was a bad choice. Okay guys, we're starting to get to my two favorite things. So number four, we have watching babies hatch. So watching babies hatch is probably the best aspect. Um, the next one might beat it, but um, there is nothing cooler than watching babies hatch that you've been waiting for all season or possibly multiple seasons. Uh, some of these clutches take years and years before you achieve your, your goal, uh, which we're I feel like we're never satisfied with, but to a certain degree anyways, uh, when you see that little head pop out um, and, and you know take its first breath or just kind of examine the world around it, uh, it is honestly one of the best feelings in the world. Um, Outside of having children yourself, there is it's just such an amazing feeling and that's what got me into ball pythons in general. I have videos explaining how I got into snakes, but basically um, I had a litter of boas and um, because of that litter of boas, because I got to see how amazing it was to see those little boas come out um, and just explore, it got me addicted to um, you know, breeding snakes and uh, that feeling is just amazing. It's so hard to explain until you experience it yourself but i i promise you it's such an am amazing rewarding feeling to see those babies come out and just see how amazing they look and it's a phenomenal feeling so i had to put that on the list and again that's probably my favorite or maybe my second favorite um only to be beaten by number five so let's uh let's jump to number five all right guys so the last one on the list number five um by the way these were in no order but this one is probably my favorite so far um, and that is going to be raising those babies. Um, raising the babies is honestly one of the most rewarding feelings and just like one of the, the coolest things that you can experience um, to see it come from that egg and to give it its first meal, especially when they take their first meal like a champ. Um, it's just such a rewarding feeling and, and one of the best experiences in terms of breeding ball pythons for me anyways and, and watching those babies start to gain weight and, and you know upgrade their tubs upgrade the their size of meal um and especially i can't wait i haven't experienced this myself but i can't wait to have a female that i produced on eggs or a male that i produced uh breeding for me and and siring some clutches so i think that feeling is going to be great uh, I would definitely include that on my list, but I haven't experienced it myself yet. So I, I'm still waiting for that moment, but I'm truly looking forward to that. And um, I had to I had to add that on onto the list as uh, you know top five things uh, or type top five of my favorite things about breeding ball pythons. Um, it's for sure on there. So all right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Um, just a quick top five. I, I figured it'd be something cool and different to do that I haven't done yet. Um, just explaining like why. I love breeding bull pythons and, and some of my favorite aspects of it. I mean, there's so much more to it that I didn't include, but I, it was hard narrowing it to five things. And I, I feel like those five things um, really keep me in this and got me into it in the first place. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this style of video. I tried to include some footage of some snakes while I was rambling in case anyone just is here to look at snakes. So uh, I didn't produce every single snake I showed, obviously. I just, I just kind of took out some snakes um, while while you're uh, listening to me ramble, but I hope you enjoyed the video either way. Um, I'm uh, really thankful for everyone who is always here watching my videos and liking and commenting. Um, and to those of you who have subscribed, and if there's anyone new out there who wants to subscribe, uh, we do weekly videos every Saturday. So I uh, would really appreciate that. I hope everyone has an awesome weekend and we will see you next Saturday.